Hello and welcome back. I am Aruma. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our common Universalis for Let's Try. So, uh, I was looking and I, I think until we're actually ahead of time on technologies, I'm going to keep on clicking these investment buttons whenever I can. Um, it's, it's not a huge amount of money and I would like to be, I think, ahead of time on every tech. So let's just take all of those. Also, I found that there is now a, an option for a royal decree. You can collect a special royal tax, which we will not be doing. We can also reorganize the government if we wanted to get rid of um, a ton of corruption. And uh, that's about it. There's nothing nothing else that's really too big or new right now. My navy appears to be dying. Um, you guys should go and hide. For now. Hope that siege completes so we can end this war. Improving relations with England for the mission in Scotland because we're going to ally him and call him to arms against the English. He has taken the Advance the Frontier mission. Uh, Ottomans... What's up with Muscovy? I haven't seen much from Muscovy. It's just been sitting. It's just, just been sitting. Done nothing to Novgorod. He seals at war with Morocco. Looks like he pulled in Portugal. Aragon's doing nothing. France is enjoying his new cores. Uh, Denmark is doing nothing, really. Sweden's slightly more loyal than before. Poland has have not pulled the gun. Or, or pulled the pulled the gun? What, what, what is the saying I'm trying to think of right now? Pulled the gun. Pulled, pulled the... Switch? Pull the push push the button? Pull the lever? I, I don't know. Some saying is not decided to attack yet. Now I also took a look at this and unfortunately it's not gonna be as impactful as is in vanilla. Uh land morale 0.25 is good, but if you look at our morale, uh we're at 2.75 base. So going from 2.75 to 3 is just a little bit. It's still more, but it's just a little bit. Tactics, same thing. We're going to go from like 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.8, which is good, but it's just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and take the tech, though. Um, we're awesome. You're four years ahead of time. Being ahead. Oh, hey, cool. I'm glad I checked this. It actually does give benefits. Vanilla, they say being ahead of time in military tech is its own reward. <laughs> Apparently not the case in Common Universalis. We get a uh, bonus yearly army tradition, navy tradition, fort defense, and siege ability. Sweet. That means that I have, like, a ridiculous amount of siege ability on that leader. It's a shame they don't let me control it. Oh, actually, I am controlling it, aren't I? Yeah. Nice, minus 25% from Desmond's siege ability. 20-day siege ticks. <clears throat> amazing. A queen of the people. She is amazing. I love this woman. I don't really want to spend 60 ducats, though. We'll just gain the 5 legitimacy, please. Game is running super slow right now. I think maybe on the annual tick, it... Look at this. This is speed four. Whoa. What? All right. Okay. That, that, yeah. Go ahead and process. Apparently on the 28th of December, it does a bunch of stuff. And the Renaissance has spawned. Cool. I know, I know. Some, someone's going to want to know which province. It spawned in Ferrara. And it's spreading up here pretty quickly-ish. What about my lands? Uh, institution spread. Not very fast. 0 0.06, 0 0.04. Alright, what can we do to actually increase it? Adjacent friendly, no. Literacy at least 6%, no. Why is it spreading to England? Just just all of the high development? Eh, just lots of development. We need to teach our kids how to read good, and then and then we'll get the Renaissance. European 5 development province post 1500, adjacent has Renaissance. We could just get literacy to 4%. Just need 4% of my people to be able to read. Ouch. Disease outbreak. Okay, uh, which province would make more sense to build a building in? And actually, do I prioritize the buildings or do I prioritize advisors? I gotta say, these ahead of time benefit, uh, benefits are really strong, and I'm hoping that they are. Yes, there are other things here too. Great efficiency, instead of 20%, it's just 5. But we get Diplo Rep and Improved Relations, and here we get. Yeah, just in general, all good things. Alright, let's go ahead and advise her up a little bit. We'll take the Trade Efficiency guy, and we'll take the Yearly Prestige guy. And we're gonna be hemorrhaging money for a little while. But we've got it. We can float it. It's fine. It's good. We'll be we'll be just fine. Don't worry about it. 
probably should not be privateering while I'm trying to make England happy. Is he actually upset with me for privateering? He might be. Oh, he's domineering now. Great. That's not good. No alliance for me. Well, that's fine. I don't I don't want an alliance with him, do I? Alright, sir, why don't you come on home? And we'll come back from Scotland. We'll get some cash from Ulster. Maybe there's a chance we can catch his ship. Probably not. Might happen though. You never know. It's like a 1% chance without a maneuver general. So, I could keep one ally. I could make Tyrone happy by giving him land. But to get the actual trust, I'd have to give it to him as part of the deal with Connaught. One thing's for sure, I'm not taking it. So let's go ahead and give it to Tyrone. So how much cash am I, am I going to be giving up if I give him this province? He has 74 ducats. I guess some like 44% of 74. Alright, let's try to keep Tyrone as an ally for now. I think. It's not worth worrying about the money on. So we're going to super peace with Kanat directly. We're going to give this to him. Um, and uh, this one is going to go to me. Apparently Sligo is not going to be that upset ab about it. Really? Well, if that's the case, that's kind of weird, but okay. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Let's just do the piece. And, uh, yeah, that did work out. We didn't gain any favors. We did gain a lot of favors here. And if Sligo is uh, a valid rival, we can just turn around now and, and rival Sligo, break the rule of marriage, break the alliance, and then attack him in five years. And he's not going to be able to pick up any alliances, except for maybe Kildari, which resets the truce timer. All right, let's check our missions. Uh, we still need to make England happy. Um, earlier, he wanted a royal marriage, but now he's he's domineering. We've got room to improve. Let's go back to spying on you. And I guess we wait a little bit. So we got a province. We will core it. 126 admin. Yeah, I mean, I'm spending almost all of my admin right now on cores. They are expensive. Base cost per development is 20 12. That's four times as much as vanilla. I th think. Yeah, pretty sure. Maybe we float this one? Now that we're ahead on military, we maybe maybe save a little bit of admin and float it? Yeah, I think we'll do that. Let's balance it. We'll sit on it, and it'll take like 20 years, and the overextension is not that bad, because it's only 10, 10 development right now. Uh, well, that's because I have two of them. Yeah, it's only 8%, and this one's almost done. Alright, yeah, we'll just sit on it. Seems reasonable to me. Merchants are suffering. Give them support or not. Uh, you know, we make so little money from trade. I'm not that concerned about it. And now my corruption is growing. A little bit. Alright, let's root it out. I still would prefer to have the opportunity to get that event. Uh, assuming it, it's still in the game. Whatever it's called, the... Uh, Oh, look at that. Castles are cheaper. They also cost 25% less than normal. 0.75 looks like... Well, it might be 0.7 because I've got some inflation. I don't know. I don't know what the actual math is, but it's less. Alright, cool. Let's play for a bit. Um, we have new provinces. This is in the same state. We could give this to the burgers right now and actually interact with them a bit. Uh, or we could interact with the clergy more... Never did... What is going to lower... Actually, when this core finishes, that might drop below 80%. Might be an argument to core this one, too. I'm just going to core this one. I do think I'm going to give it to the burgers. So, remove local autonomy for production, trade power, naval force limit, local sailors. Production efficiency. We're going to make lots and lots of fishes. Fishes is one of those weird words where you can say fish, you can say fishes, and you're both 
technically, you're, you're correct on both, and it just sounds odd. It sounds very odd to me. So, in vanilla, like, you're normally looking for the one with the manpower indicator, but like, how do you decide what provinces to give to the nobles? Just all the, all the uh, grain provinces or something? Because they all give manpower. All three stats. I want to interact with the burgers. I want to do stuff with them. What are we going to do? We're going to demand some diplo points. Uh, we're going to get a skill 2. Goods produced modifier plus 12.5%. Hmm. 12.5%? Alderman Expert. Alderman Expert? Is he like a better version of a normal advisor? If they found a way to make that happen, that's amazing. Alright, this one is pretty standard. Uh, five, five loyalty, ten... Uh, we gain loyalty and it's only a ten year modifier. Yes, please, click that. Okay, yeah, let's hire this guy. And let's demand our points. Or we could wait until 55. Nah, we'll just take the Diplo points. Awesome. Cool. I like it. It's good stuff. And corruption's growing again. By how much? Just a tiny, tiny bit. And we can invest in Diplotech. Nice. Before the uh, Renaissance starts to get really penalizing, let's go ahead and knock those out. Do we immediately rival Sligo? Yes, we do that. They break their alliance immediately. And uh, we can break our roller marriage here. We have some pretty good stuff going right now. We got um, three splendor per month from the Humiliate Rival. We got 68 power protection. We've conquered the southern half of Ireland. So far, haven't really been affected too much by this, uh, this governance capacity thing, like stopping me from expanding. It's just kind of being what it is. But we are at 90%, so it is starting to add up, I guess. Ooh, I want to see what happens when you go over it. I wonder how bad the effects are. Of course, it's going to get better now, because now this is a core. It's the correct culture, correct religion, so we're probably going to gain a bunch of governance capacity right there. Yeah, 12 out of 15, and it should be even better if I make it into a state. Do I have to pay another crazy-ass amount? Oh my god, I do. It's so expensive. Well, I guess I know which button I'm always going to be pressing. I will always be buying admin points from the decisions list. Did I forget to core this one? or No, we paid the full price then. Hmm. Is what it is, I guess. Yep, I, just, I want that full core. That means we can turn Edict on here now. Do we want to... Keep on doing local development. I think so. Probably in every province. I just... I don't know. Maybe not. We're talking about like 0.12 ducats a month. Let's not do that for now. We are now down to 110. Nope. Yes. We still get a discount on state maintenance in our capital? Yes. Alright, and that means that uh, after I break my royal marriage here, I should have a spare relationship slot, and hopefully... Hopefully, yeah. You are for it, aren't you, sir? So I go, um, we can't be friends anymore. You are my rival, won't, won't affect anything. And uh, I'm going to upgrade to a Scotland, please. Thank you. Nice. And he wants all of the, all of the lands. Showing that I'm over the relationship limit, because I still have military access. Alright, it's a penalty for one month. No big deal. Royal marriage? I'll take it. Sounds good. Last time we had a royal marriage, they gave us a 566 six heir. Or woman. Whatever it is. We should get this kid killed so she can rule. Uh, matters of state. The people of our great earldom are well aware of our dispute with Kildare. Considering that this is also the homeland of our queen, it is no wonder that Rasheen has met with has been met with increasing animosity. No, she's amazing! Everyone loves her, look how pretty she is. Uh, for all uh, all that they know, she could be harboring loyal- No, stop it! Some distance? Screw that. No. She has her trust, who cares? Yes, she's awesome. Go away, you stupid military guy. 
who gave me 10% morale of armies, which would have been really handy. Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. We're heading, we're heading military tech anyway, and uh, I just don't want to piss her off. I like her. How much would it cost me to swing down to here? What will the actual effect be? Wait one month and see. Ah, shoot, I'm supposed to be retracting that relationship. Sligo. I'm your rival. Why are you giving me military access to you? You should have canceled that for me. I think. And he's no longer domineering. He actually wants a royal marriage now. Probably because he's assessed my alliance with Scotland and sees that as a problem. Oh, he's got mothballed fort right there. Two mothballed forts. Which means he must have put down the rebels. Because otherwise he would not be willing to do that at all. Any active rebels always have the fort on. Hmm. We'll see what mission we get after we make him happy. And then we'll decide what to do from there. So if I go down to 80%, what do I actually lose? Manpower recovery speed, minus 20%. But we currently regain 20, 100 a month every way. A anyway, it's, uh, that's the bare minimum you can recover. We suffer more attrition, but we're not suffering attrition. We lose army tradition a lot faster. The decay rate will go from base 6 up a lot. Recruitment time goes up, reinforcement time goes bad, we spawn fewer generals, we, okay. Okay, um, so really the only thing I'm losing right this moment, if I were a bigger country I would be really hurting from the manpower recovery speed, but it's just the army tradition, and I really like army tradition, but that's not going to be what keeps us, what actually keeps us um, winning wars at the moment. It's going to be superior tech and hopefully a better alliance. All right, one more month on England's National Manpower Modifier guy. Gotta say it's tempting. Yeah, I'm gonna take it. Full annexation. Athens cedes Athens. Byzantium pays decades. All right, goodbye, Byzantium. Low army maintenance. Hold on now. I know this event. And 60 military power or 2 mercantilism. And mercantilism is not a flat, always good thing anymore. It will be, though. If things go well and we conquer the great, the, the, the node that we're in, the trade node, then it would be valuable. On the other hand, beating him to tech 5. Pretty good chance we'll be ahead of him on Tech 4 for a long time. Oh my god, 655. King Edmund the First Lancaster. It's terrifying. Maybe we should be friends with England instead. <laughs> no, no. Well, it's not like I'm going to beat him to Tech 5 right this second. I guess I'll go for the mercantilism. Sounds fine. And that means I'm actually gaining a little bit of cash. Maybe I could afford to build another building. We can build a marketplace, local commerce growth plus one. Local commerce growth modifier, local commerce uh, urban capacity cost, more trade power, and local commercial tax modifier. Okay, interesting. So the marketplace isn't just trade now, it's actually going to give us uh, like what is equivalent to base tax income. I like it. Well, of all the places we could build it, I think the capital makes the most sense. Very expensive. Uh, or we could build this and it doesn't really provide a direct effect outside of it lets us build development overall hmm. whereas Edmontech 4, the church local literacy growth literacy loss from ag agriculture goes down these are all well, we'll build bit this pretty soon. The thing is, there's no estuaries here, so I'm, I'm not so sure I actually want to build that. I'm going to hold the cash for now. Hold on to the cash, keep a little, a little treasury, just in case we need it. And we'll make our decision later. I also didn't need to really improve relations with England anymore. Save the Irish people of Pale. Alright, that, see, that's very tempting. Got pretenders over here. They're going to do the siege for me. Well, it's not a fort, so... Can't remove Kildari, because we have a truce. We don't want to create a proper fleet. Um, hey, uh, hey, Scotland. 
Hey, hey, Scotland. How do you feel about going to war with England? You just know that the Pol the uh, the Portuguese are going to come land here. Scotland's all for it. He's like, let's do this. Tyrone, on the other hand, is like, dude, he's scary. <laughs> Portugal, only four reasons. You know, there might be a timing here where I can avoid having Portugal join. If he gets a little bit more war exhaustion or something, it could actually happen. I can support one more troop now, too. And we'll need it. I mean, that's a terrifying fleet. Terrifying army. I have to assume England's got a pretty, ar pretty big army, right? What's he got? England is at... Yeah, 22,000 troops. He's murked up. I mean, he's not strong. Maybe we should go on a little scouting mission with our ships. Let's go privateer in the English Channel again. And, uh... All right, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna look around a little bit more, try to try to assess the strength of England, and perhaps, yeah, he's got even more rebels over there too. Still got that two four three leader though, Richard Plantagenet, Plantagenet, Plant Plantagenet, whatever, something like that. These must be new rebels because he did have those forts mothballed. Alright, cool. I'll be back in the next one. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.